Hey gang, and welcome to another edition of the Sermonette. I'm Ian Allen, and it's a pleasure once again to join you in your YouTube living room as we explore God's Word together. Do you remember back in school? We got to learn a lot. Learning is a fun thing, although the thing we hated most, and many of you can relate, is taking tests. Although the funny part is, even as we've grown older, even if we're out of school, we still have to take we've still had to take them. But think back, we'll say high school. History class. Covering the Civil War. Not a necessarily the toughest error, but there's a lot of de details when it comes to covering such a epic marked history timeline. You have two students. You have Mr. Smarty Pants and Mr. Slacker. Now, Mr. Smarty Pants, everybody calls him a nerd. Everybody knows he does well in his classes. They know he gets an A in almost everything. And while Mr. Slacker over here, he kind of just coasts. He kind of doesn't really put forth his best effort. He kind of does what he's supposed to, but at the same time, he's kind of lazy. And then, both of them hear about this upcoming test. And here's what happens in each of their nights. Mr. Smarty Pants goes home, and he diligently studies. I mean, he leaves little times for breaks so he doesn't get too worn down from studying. Because it is possible to overstudy. But it's good to know the material. But he's going everything from all the major battles. He's reviewing the major characters, the generals, um, some of the key terms that he's going to have to remember. Hey, he even invites over some friends who are in his class to help remember what needs to be studied then he gets some good night rest he arrives promptly to school and then he goes to history class takes the test and he passes slacker on the other hand after on the night before the test he goes home kind of looks over some things yeah this and that and everything in between well we all know what happens. He gets distracted. He wants to play a video game, so he does it. Well, he cuts some friends over, although they end up having a Halo tournament instead of trying to um, study about Abraham Lincoln and everything with the Civil War. This is already not looking good. And on top of that, he ends up staying up late. Super late. And as a matter of fact, it gets even crazier than that. Apparently, his study materials get eaten by the dog. So, he then he gets up. As it's late for school, he still barely arrives on time, is tardy for class, still gets to take the test. He has some bad things happen. And he does not pass. What's the difference between them? One word. Preparation. It seems to be the thing that will make or break you in life. It doesn't matter what it is. It's important. The funny thing is, while it's easy for us to forget something when we go on a long trip that we kind of miss later, or whether it be forget a vital detail for a presentation in the business world that'll make the difference between making or breaking the success. It always seems sometimes that we're not prepared when we need to be. But I'll tell you, the thing that we lack preparation most is when it comes to a relationship with God and how we wait on his coming 
there's a lot of people who do get excited about when Jesus comes back. But there's a lot of people who are kind of like, yeah, that's okay. And then there's some who get terrified. But you can definitely tell the people who are not prepared. Check out what I mean. Um, Jesus told a parable where he compared ten, or ten virgins to what the kingdom of heaven will be like when it comes close to the time for his return. If you will turn with me to Matthew 25, it's going to be verses 1 through 13. If you guys need to pause the video, go ahead. That way we can read it together. And I just pray God shares the blessing of his word with you. All right. At the time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps, but did not take any oil with them. The wise, however, took oil in the, jar, in the jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry, the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom, come out and meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. No, they replied, There may not be enough for both of us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were already went in with him to the banquet, wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the others also came. Sir, sir, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you the truth, I do not know you. Therefore keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. Now, talk about the ultimate case of not being prepared. That's downright laziness on the five foolish. But what you have here is a case of the wise and the foolish. It's plain and simple. Um, pretty much, the others were ready for the bridegroom to come. The others were not. And they ultimately, the foolish, paid the price. And we can take this when it comes to God. The preparation, though, sometimes is hard for us to get. Jesus says we are to be prepared, because he is coming again. One day soon. We don't know the day. We don't know the hour. Could be tomorrow. Could be a week from tomorrow. Could be a thousand years from now. It could be ten years from now. Who knows? We can speculate all day. But the point is, we need to be ready. But how we get ready starts with a relationship with Jesus Christ. Coming to know Him in a personal way. Not just saying you're Christian, but also living it out, being obedient to Jesus Christ and God the Father, and walking with Him. That's what it means to be prepared. So I'm going to ask you, will you be prepared for that day? Will you be prepared Walking with Jesus Christ. Guys, I wish your week go well this week. Much love to you all, and I look forward to seeing you again on the Sermonette. Shalom.